All right, listen, first of all, this is not COA today, living smart, living uh, well. Why do I have these utensils? This is a new program on behalf of ICAM. It is going to be called The Galley Chef. It is, will be a 30-minute cooking show, uh, and we will uh, have various cooks, chefs around town, maybe one of the uh, restaurant chefs. Who knows? I might do something anyhow, all right? So, here's our first episode. Watch. <laughs> Mushroom maven, <laughs> artist of renown, Mrs. Erica Saunders, right. who has been kind. Of, she's also a mycologist. Right? Is that? I'm a field biologist. A field biologist. She's a mushroom hunter, is what I'm trying. Yeah, to. that's part of it. Two I years mean, you've been telling me you're going to take me on well, mushroom I mean, safari. Every time and I, I to... call you, you say you've got something else going okay. on. Tell me about these mushrooms here. <laughs> Okay, now, right now is a fantastic season. It's September and October, and you'll find what we have here in the woods, but you have to go look for them because more and more people are looking because I tell them, oh. and all my good spots are being raided by my students, but I, I find the woods. So this is the one that is absolutely fantastic. It's called the Head in the Woods, where I fall on. And it is absolutely delicious. And what you have to do with it, you basically take its foot off, which is down here, which I will do now. It's sort of a messy thing. It's very much full of breath. Wow. You take that off. And then, oop, well, what I do is, let me go over here. Oh, I can get this thing right yeah. here. That's even better. I don't so, want to be in a sous chef. Oh, okay. So what we do is... <laughs> oh, that thing doesn't even cut, look real. I mean, in a way, No, you know, it is like a big cauliflower. So yeah. Yeah. I cut it in half. And usually some bugs scurry out of it, but <laughs> they don't. They don't. Are they, are they generally that size in the woods? Oh, this is small. This is a small one? This big. I'm not kidding. This big. <laughs> I could not even lug those things out of the woods because they're heavy, too. Can I lift this? Would you mind? Yeah. Let's, let's have a small one. Pretty but dense. Big, it? Oh, it is. But see how beautiful it looks on the inside? It's all white, and these are tiny little teeth, actually. It's very soft, it's like velvet. What an earthy aroma. Yeah, isn't that nice? Mm. So then I, I divide it into various pieces. And then we're gonna cut it. And that's how, and what I like to do is I learn, you see there's a little sound, but. No, 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 not no, the no, 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 <laughs> we don't. I have a friend, a little wood, a forest so friend. Very, look, what I do is very thin, Slice it of the hen in the woods. Very thin. Okay. Like that. After I have a whole bunch, I put them in a big sieve and I rinse it off really good and hot. Okay. They always tell you don't wash mushrooms, but I think you should because you don't really know what ends up in the woods on top of them. There may be some poisonous spores, there may be amanita spores. I wash my mushrooms, and it doesn't take anything away. And I always say, hey, rain gets on them too. Okay. Okay. So then I, after I've cut this all up, I put it in a big pot, and I uh, put a little bit of my vegetable stock into it, onions, Sauté them for a little bit, then I dump all of this in, that's nice and wet now, and I steam the whole mushroom for about 20 minutes. We better come clean with the audience. You, uh, Erica is a vegan, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. 
for the edification of the audience and for me also, what is the difference between a vegetarian and a vegan? A vegetarian does not eat any dairy products, does not eat any, any animal products whatsoever. It's a whole foods, whole grain, vegetable diet. And we are on a very special diet, which is the Esselstyn diet, which not, does not allow you to use any fat whatsoever. No oil, no butter, no nothing. So what I use is, I use the... Um, this blows up the Mediterranean diet then. Well, we were on the Mediterranean diet for many, many, many years before. Four years ago, we changed into vegan. And I had all kinds of problems. High blood pressure, high cholesterol. I never had a problem with weight because I'm way too busy. I'm always zipping around everywhere. But, oh my God, I had to take these pills, and even then, it didn't come down. I felt awful, you know, especially with the cholesterol mm -hmm. lowering. It was horrible. And then we came, well, we saw a movie, um, Knives Over Fox, and that led us to this book by Esselstyn, and we read it, and we said, well, we've got to do this. Okay. And wonderful, wonderful recipes in here. I mean, you would not believe all the good stuff that's in here. But you and were hunting for mushrooms way before this, too. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I started when I was seven years old in Germany. My father took me or my grandmother, and we had to because it was during the war, you know, and we didn't have much food. So we went out scrounging around for wild edibles, and I still do. I have to show you this. Later on, I'll show you the wild grapes right now, everywhere. Tons of them. Tons. Like those blueberries. No, no, those are grapes, and I make something absolutely delicious. Jelly? No, it's a German dish. Well, it's sort of like jelly. Okay. Right. It's sort of like jelly. So anyway... You don't take five years of German in school? No. Yeah. When all I can ask for, I can order a beer, I can thank, I can say... I'm beer beer day. I'd be a bit tired and darker, and I can ask where the police station is. I don't know. Wo ist die Polizei? Polizeibeamter? Oder wo ist das Polizeibeamt? Is that a... Anyhow, that's Where a, is, where is the gonna, police not, station? Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. So anyway, so I started the mushroom thing, and I tell you, now I give walks, I give talks, I give workshops. Audubon, and it's a big success because we cook up a lot At of the stuff. the Audubon in, in Topsfield? Yeah, there? yeah, in Ipswich River. It, well, yeah. Oh. What I do is, of course, for weeks ahead, I go hunt for mushrooms, and I prepare them already, and then I bring it in. Do you make a map, or you just know where they are? I know where they are. Okay. I know the... Uh, what is it? Willowdale inside out, Bradley Palmer inside out, Manchester Essex Wood inside out, um, Gloucester Woods inside. I know. I'm you can't. Market basket. No. <laughs> Market <laughs> basket. I know inside <laughs> out. Yes. Okay. The, especially the, goes. I mean the vegetables. Section. Okay. So anyway, so this is it, and the other one we have is the honey mushroom. It does not look like honey. Now the honey mushrooms are out now too, mm -hmm. and there I only I only use it, the top, the cap, the, yeah, the cap, because this stuff is pretty tough, okay. and sometimes they come in this color, you know, slightly more brown. Mm -hmm. But when you see the white on top, that those are the spores. You can make a spore print with them when you cut off a cap. You put it on a white paper or black paper in this case, put a, a bowl over it, and the next day you have the most beautiful spot print. Hmm. You know, just show this. Can, those spores, mm -hmm. can, can you cultivate these? That's what yeah, that's what some people do. I mean, they have been able to actually grow the hen in the woods. Mm -hmm. I saw I saw some a couple of years ago at Market Basket. They were tiny, but they didn't taste quite as good. Okay. 
And then they have been able to, um, what's the other one? Oh, the morels now. The Japanese okay. have figured right. out how to grow morels. That's almost that version of truffles, right? It is. It, well, no, the, the morels come up in the spring here, but we, we, we don't find them in New England. But they're expensive. Oh, yeah. Okay. Very, very. What about this? This one blows my mind. This, well, this is this. my favorite, and you're going to taste it later. This is called the sofa shell, and it grows also on oaks, the hen in the woods at the bottom of big old oaks. This one goes along the whole tree trunk, and you can't miss it when you come in the woods. The color. <laughs> the color is just glowing, glowing, uh, you know, orange, and then it's bright yellow underneath. It looks like a coral shell. It's beautiful. Oh. it's beautiful. I have some wonderful pictures of it. Mm. And when you get it fresh, it's got to be really young. Then you cut it just like the hen in the woods. You cut it into fine little stripes. Mm -hmm. And I also do the same thing. I steam it for a while and then I put it all into freezer bags. Let me show you. I have at least a hundred of these downstairs. Now this happens to be a hen in the woods. That's a freezer bag. Okay. That's one portion, or one and a half, two portions. And then I do the same with the sofa shelf, with the chanterelle that I collect in August. And you know, and also we have to talk about a little bit about those. These guys, they are now, right now they're coming up, and they are the safest mushroom, and you can't mistake them. What you call them? These are slippery jacks. Slippery jacks? Slippery jacks, bullies. Actually, it's a swillers. That's the Latin. Okay. Anyway, but most people don't care about that. So anyway, these slippery jacks, when you find them, of course, you take stem off them. Mm -hmm. And if you want to, you can also peel them back, see? Why would you do that? Um, sometimes if they're very dirty and sticky and okay. rather than, you know, it doesn't take anything from the taste away. So it's not, it's not, you're not doing it for flavor? No, no. This okay. is just for, I, do, I usually don't bother. I just rinse them off of it. Very, okay. st very sticky stuff. And then if it's this beautifully neat, clean inside, you just slice them in first and then I go boom, boom, boom. and then I fry them up and these you don't have to steam first those you can fry up with some onions garlic what's the idea of steaming it it softens them up is that it or? softens them up and it makes it I then can freeze them That's oh, okay, okay. but you can never ever eat that much all at once no you know, so you want to, and it doesn't taste anything away, but you, after you steam it, you can still fire. Okay. They taste yeah, right. just as good. Right. Yeah. yeah. How often do you eat these? Every day. Really? Every day. I make sure I have at least 150 packs of mushrooms for the months where I can't collect. I have my whole freezer full right now. You don't have any of the ones that they'd get down in Mexico that give you the weird dreams. Yeah, we have them. I know, I know. I know we have them, but you know what? I have always stayed away from it. We yeah, you have, should. We have the Amanitas, which are poisonous beyond belief. Some can kill you, but others are hallucinogenic. Oh boy. And it's usually the one, Amanitas always come out of a big bulb called a Volva. Then they have a very nice, beautiful white stem and always white gills. These things are called gills. You have a heck of a dinner party with them. Well, the thing is... Uh, <laughs> holy cow, holy cow. I wouldn't do it because some people have gotten really sick. sick. Yeah. And, and the totally white Amanita is the angel of death. You eat that, there is nothing they can do. It liquid, liquid yeah, that, is, yeah, that is a dangerous name, the angel of death. I know. I'm stay Amanita. away from those I movies. stay away from all Amanitas. And when I give my talks and workshops, I always, the first thing I show slides, I say, 
Amanitas, you know, I show the poisonous ones. We actually only have two that will kill you. Okay. One is the Amanita and the other one is a tiny little brown mushroom that grows on woods, wood and sometimes out of the grass. It's called the deadly gallery, gallerina. Okay. And All right. So how one, we, psh, you what, don't. what are we going to cook here? So we are going to have the vegan stuff. Okay. All right. I trust you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on full blast. Mm -hmm. I use this at Audubon. Right. So now instead of oil, what we're going to do, we're going to put in my wonderful stock. That you make yourself. I make my stock out of stems from various vegetables that I use. Cabbages. Mm -hmm. I also always add an onion to it, and I also add a little celery to it, and I add uh, carrots. Okay. It's getting warm. So we'll put some of the veggie stuff in there, and then you put the onions. In. That's what it says here. Okay. Stir fry onions. You read it. In a non-stick saucepan, <laughs> stir fry onions. onions. That's what this is. Adding liquid, broth, water, wine, or orange juice. Orange juice, see? Apple cider. Why not apple cider? Oh, you apple could. cider is great this time of year. Oh, it is. I, uh, I buy that cider at, uh, I love the stuff down at Russell's, but yeah. um, Rudy's, I think is the name of it, at uh, Market yeah, Basket. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and is it, that good? It, it lasts. It, yeah, it, I have it in my store. Until the onion begins to welt. Wilt. 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 Of Deutsch Wilt. You soften those up and then it says add broccoli, celery, peppers, and squash. Okay, we will do that now. Add broccoli. See, I did already do that ahead because that would take forever now. Okay. Broccoli. Peppers. All nicely sliced into thin little slivers, as they said. Whoops. Ooh, nice. Yeah, that's pretty. See, that's the other thing that looks so pretty. What type of squash? Um, I used the zucchini because they didn't, at Market Basket, they didn't have any um, yellow squash. Okay. Green. But zucchini is fine. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Okay. Now, she said, stir this for me. Celery. Celery too. Celery. Cut diagonally, as I said. Cut it diagonally, two slices. Celery. Mmm. Certainly got some color. Mmm. -hmm. Oh, it's getting better. Oh my god, you got all sorts of stuff here. Oh yeah. I love this. It's so much fun. It just, it's for the eyes too. You know, it's just so pretty. Mmm. Stir and broth. Sugar, snap peas, and ginger. Okay, now stir and broth. How much of the broth? Mm, one cup. Here's my broth. One cup of broth. It'll calm it down a little bit. And what was the ginger? Bring two. Yeah, uh, sugar, snap peas, and ginger. Sugar, snap peas are here. All fixed. Love sugar snap peas. That is so good these days. And here I overdo it with the ginger. I have to say, they say not that much ginger, but I love ginger and it's so healthy. I, well, that's one good thing. I use a lot of ginger. You do? I, I, I love that it. That garlic. Now, garlic, uh, it, this doesn't call for garlic, but no, I, but use, I garlic. use garlic. I use a big elephant garlic. Oh, yes, okay. okay. Those are good. They're not quite as sharp, you know. Just as a sidebar, I got lazy and I bought uh, some of that peeled garlic you see at Market Basket. Mm -hmm. And I got home and I turned, you know where it comes from? What? China. Oh. <laughs> you imagine? I mean, I really think that I seems think. silly to me. That's ridiculous. Why uh, snap peas rather than uh, the, the regular pea pods? No, you can do that. See? Okay. It says you can, any of these vegetables, use whatever you want to. Okay. In a small bowl, stir together tamari, lime juice, yeah. and cornstarch. All right, you can do that. 
I know what tamara. What's tamara? Uh, tamara is basically like this. A, it's a soy, way. soy sauce. It's a soy sauce. Okay. No salt or very low salt. Yeah, low salt. Okay. Here we go. Oh, by the way, Eric is a uh, oh, exercise yeah. His, uh, maven. Paul's wife puts us to the ringer. She does a aerobics with my wife. Uh, I live up the street from Erica, and I see her marching by often. Oh on yes, her walk around when my I'm neck. Not, when I'm not in the woods. <laughs> Okay, wait a minute. What was it? And cornstarch? Uh, tamari, lime juice, and cornstarch. Okay. Two Cornstarch is to what? Thicken it? Yeah. And how much do they actually uh, say? Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. Okay. I didn't know some could smell this good without using olive oil and butter. Oh, you probably shouldn't tell you how much butter I use a week. Oh, you, you better not. It's so bad. I'll get tamari. How much of that? Uh, tamari, 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 tamari. Three tablespoons. Three? Wow. Well, that will give us the flavor, see? And, and when you make that vegetable broth, what, you boil it? You, you're boiling the stems of vegetables? And yes. Like that, you know? I, I, for about 10, 15 minutes, uh -huh. then I let it sit there. Okay. You know, until, we, and then I, of course, through a sieve, I just get the juice and the water. Okay. The rest I'll check out. Okay, we got lime juice, we got this, and we got the tamari. Remove but, pan from heat and stir in tamari mixture. Aha. Uh -huh. I bet you, we, and then it says return pan to medium heat and cook about a minute. I think we'll just leave it I in think there. we should just leave it in the pan. That's right? what I, I mean, I don't follow recipes today. Okay, so now we're supposed to put that in there. Just made a beef bourguignon yesterday. I don't think you'd like it. It had a ton of butter oh, in it. Oh, I love it. I, love, <laughs> I don't. It was good. I, oh, <laughs> boy, when I was still eating that stuff, uh, are you kidding? A good... Oh. All right, you had that. In. I used to do all of those things, but now I'm much healthier, much stronger for an old lady like me, you know. Well, you're certainly active. I won't ask you uh, no. your age, but. Uh, I can easily tell you. My kids are taking me to Germany for my 80th next August. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Not cool? Yeah, they're nice. And now well, you can't have any Wiener schnitzel or any of that. No, no sour broth. No, I know they'll have it, and I, I don't know what I have. Salad, <laughs> carrot Salads. stick. Yeah, so good bread. Stir in cilantro. That's it, and we are now going to turn it off because cornstarch. Cook... This is actually I can recall. This cornstarch actually breaks down under too much heat, right? Yes. It does. You just turn it off all together. That goes off. And now we put cilantro. It's already chopped, and I love cilantro. I never used to like it way back when. But now I like it. Oh, it does give you some detours if you want. It says you can substitute vegetables if you wish. Yeah. Uh, green beans for the sugar snap peas or cauliflower for the broccoli. Mm hmm Yeah, you can do anything. It's just basic, you know, it's just veggies. Oh, it looks good. It says now eat. No, it says if you want, you can uh, serve it over brown rice. Yeah, brown rice. I use canola. I use brown rice. I use black rice. I don't black use black rice. Oh yeah, have you not seen black rice? I've heard of black rice. Oh, actually. Brown rice. Black rice. I've never. It tastes wonderful. Very nutty. You know. I'm kidding. Yeah, it's good. See, it's. See, black rice is sweet potatoes. Do you eat sweet potatoes are very good for you? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. We have sweet potatoes. What I love is these little, these little potatoes. I boil them until they're, you know, for 15 minutes. Yeah. That cool them. Then I cut them in half and I put them in this pan with a little onion and my stock there and brown them and put lemon pepper. This is...
silly. How is it? Pretty good? You might be making me a convert. Good! Oh, oh, you know what? It would be so good for you. No, but which this, mushrooms are these? These are right now my favorites, and that's the, this one. The sulfur shelf. Sulfur shelf? The sulfur shelf. Try it. You've got to try that. I love that mushroom. And then this, is, <laughs> this is cool. I've been after Erica for close to a year to do this and now. <laughs> yeah, see how you, besides, once you're on a vegan diet, don't worry about weight anymore. Oh, wow. It can't happen. Oh, wow. Is that good? And oh, these? Those are the sulfur shells. And you cook them just with vegetable? Vegetable, onions. I, I use shallots a lot. I yes. love shallots. I do. Well, see, and these are the little, the big hen in the world. Let's see that. That's how they should be. They should be nice and crunchy. When I do this for the auto bar, they usually have 20, 25 people. Wow. You, know, you have to cook a lot. They love it. I usually make a chaparral soup for them. Oh my goodness. Try it. You like that? Mm -hmm. Good, huh? It's not a false, false compliment. <laughs> These are delicious. They, you like those, huh? I love them. The, the one I can't pronounce. Um, sofa shell. Sofa shell. Listen, Eric, I want to thank you. Uh, we appreciate My pleasure. It. And one of these days you are going to take me mushroom hunting, right? Yeah, I mean. Hey, definitely. Um, keep a lookout for uh, one of our talks at the Audubon Society. Yeah. I'm going to, I think I'll go to the next Next one. time, that's always on October 5th or 4th or whatever, Sunday. First Sunday. Fifth. I'm from October. Nights and hot notes. Why? Nights by the right here for Zeg Sieben, Hot Neun, Zehn. Yep, same. And then you got Zehn und Neun, Eins, by Elf, Zwölf. 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, all right. We gotta go. Thank you very much. We appreciate it.